Yeah, well, we, we are in uh, freedom and confidence in difficult times. You remember, this is the series at the moment. Um, confidence, ah. um, just at the moment. I have been really blessed by a number of a number of WhatsApps that have come in this morning from people in the church um, uh, who, who <laughs> have been praying for me. So thank you, thank you so much for that. Re- really appreciated it, and and I, I felt of a, a great calm about this. So here we go. Ian has, uh, or Jan kindly has emailed over Ian's sermon to me, which I've got here. So it's kind of partly read and partly partly preached. But uh, um, I, I, I'm sure on Thursday eve, uh, Thursday morning we we were praying in the early morning prayer meeting and we prayed for Ian that uh, God would inspire him in his preparation for this morning. So um, I, I trust that that inspiration is is down on the paper in front of us and that we can draw we can draw some real help, practical help, um, as we seek to be, you know, God's, uh, Jesus' ambassadors uh, uh, as, as we go through our days here. Um, and this topic of anger, freedom from anger. Wow. Um, and I guess, I guess there's, there's, there's no doubt, is there, that we live in, a, in an angry world. And you don't have to glance at the news, don't you? Um, this week, the royal family with um, Harry and, and and Meghan and their situation, vice versa, maybe. I, I don't know the what's going on in, in Myanmar at the moment with the, the army and the protesters against the military rule. I just think of, of people who died even yesterday, the, the anger that there is. And you can move across the world, and Hong Kong, Syria, Belarus, <clears throat> More recently, even even locally, the people in Budley, <laughs> whose homes have flooded yet again, you know, this feeling of anger. Facebook versus the Australian government, road rage, anger management courses, a common thing in training for employees these days. Um, so and then then, of course, there's you, me. Um, the last time someone said something, did something didn't do something maybe that 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 upset you me there you go i never get angry of course me personally at least ian said he never gets angry that's what it says here so it must be true so a dictionary definition is this that anger is is hot displeasure uh, and if expressed rather than bottled up it it, it um results in hostility and often thoughts of of revenge and there are loads of expressions and and sayings for anger aren't there some people fly off the handle some let off steam some chuck their toys out of the pram well others take their ball home I, i've not heard that one um but it, i understand what it means some are up in arms others are on the warpath some simmer some explode some gnash their teeth i i don't know whether i've heard anybody gnashing their teeth but i think i've heard somebody spitting nails so there you go others snort cartoons and emojis you can see steam coming out of ears on emojis that's one of the one of the ones so you can probably think of other descriptions for this kind of very common emotion isn't it so what are we to make of anger and how can we find freedom from it well now ian has set this out as in 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 four four points for heading so and and the first one is this that anger can be dangerous and there's loads of proverbs that mention anger and he couldn't find many positive ones and and he lists a few here it's very interesting actually i i come to a new appreciation of the proverbs actually because these are the thoughts of of a man what three thousand years ago and i think it's incredible there's so much in common with life three thousand years ago to now and obviously it's vastly different the bronze age to 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 where we are now um but just so much commonality as well so proverbs 14 29 here you go a patient person has great understanding but a quick-tempered person displays folly a heart at peace gives life to the body but envy rots the bones Uh, next 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 chapter a gentle answer turns away wrath but a harsh word stirs up anger 1632 
better a patient person than a warrior, a person who controls their temper than one who takes a city. Proverbs 29, 11, a fool gives vent to their anger, but a wise person keeps themselves under control. 29, 22, an angry person stirs up dissension and a hot tempered one stirs up many sins. 30, 33, for as the churning of milk produces butter and as twisting, I beg your pardon, and as twisting the nose produces blood, there you go, um, so stirring up anger produces strife. Uh, 3,000 years ago, they were churning butter, churning milk to produce butter and twisting noses to produce blood. Um, there you go. Um, so you see the dangers here, don't you? Seriously. Firstly, the danger to your health. It can rot your bones. Psychologists reckon that anger is at the seat of a lot of mental health issues, actually. Medics think that anger, either retained or expressed, leaves you open to heart disease and stroke. So beware anger. So that's the first thing. Secondly, is the danger to society. An, ang an angry person stirs up dissension, don't they, which produces strife. Words and actions expressed in anger can be like grenades exploding and petrol on flames. They make things worse, don't they? Not better. Things escalate. Uh, and it's true at a personal level and it's true at, at, at national level too. And then thirdly, anger, anger seriously distorts your ability to make wise choices. Okay, remember that first, the first proverb, which was a patient person has great understanding, but a quick person displays folly. You have wise, great understanding, quick tempered folly, foolishness. And we all know that people, sometimes ourselves, who have acted rashly in, in temper. <clears throat> you see it on the sports field, don't you? Footballers, rugby players, um, Formula One drivers. <laughs> the red mist comes down and uh, rash acts take place. Um, and they, they look so foolish afterwards, don't they? And you know why they look foolish? Because it is foolish, um, as the proverb writer says. So if we've attended, if we if we have a tendency to, to anger, it can be really hard to shake, and that's the truth. And here's a, a letter that Ian quotes from a counsellor. To, sorry, to a counsellor from an older lady. It goes like this. 20 years ago, when my child was having a tantrum, you advised me to let him kick the furniture and let off steam to get it out of his system. Today, he still kicks the furniture and beats his wife. Nothing has changed. All too brief. But I think we can see that anger can be dangerous, both to ourselves and to others. So there you are, point one, anger can be dangerous. But there's another angle to, uh, to, to anger in the scriptures. Anger can be a good thing. The first proverb that we, that we read, the one that I repeated, the patient person has great understanding, but a quick tempered person displays folly, remember that? If you read that in the great New King James Version, my favourite, it says this. One who is slow to anger is of great understanding. You see, there's a sense here that it is actually OK to get angry at the right times and in the right way. Um, the, the correct response is not no anger i.e. bottling it up, and it's not to blow anger by exploding it out, but slow anger. That's the way to get it right. So why is slow anger okay? And the answer to that is because that's the way that God is. His self-revelation of who he is and what he's like to Moses was set out here in, in, in Exodus Chapter 34 and verse 6. I'm going to read this. 
the Lord, the Lord, the compassionate and gracious God, slow to anger, abounding in love and faithfulness, maintaining love to thousands and forgiving wickedness, rebellion and sin. So do you hear that? God is slow to anger. And you and I were made in his image. Therefore, put it to you, we have the capacity to be angry in a good way. Now, amazingly, Ian's done the counting here. God's anger is mentioned 455 times in the Old Testament and 375 times in the New Testament. And Ian actually says, this statistic made me angry because I lost count halfway through the New Testament and had to start again. So the question is not whether we should be angry, but how and why we should be angry. And there's a guy called John Chrysostom, who lived in the fourth century. He said this, he that is angry without a cause sins. But he that isn't angry with a cause sins. Do you get that? He that is angry without a cause sin, sins. But he that is angry, sorry, he that isn't angry with a cause sins. Follow that? The key then is what causes us to be angry. There has to be a just cause. Now, some people can't bear to think of of, of an angry God, much preferring to think of his love. But the fact is that God gets angry because he loves. And, and if the subject of his love is threatened or is in danger or, or rebellious or indifferent to his love, then he understandably gets angry. So his anger is roused at the people of Israel, uh, a stiff necked people, it says in Exodus 32 verse 10. And again, on the people of, uh, of Israel, when they went off and worshipped other gods in, in Deuteronomy 29 and so on, uh, as, as Ian said, 450 times, not as Ian counted, 450 times in the Old Testament. And, and then in the New Testament, we see Jesus being angry with Satan at his, at his temptation at Peter, or, although it's Satan speaking through him. And of course, famously, when visiting the temple, when he he turned the tables um, in, in the marketplace, he turned over the tables and the stalls and, and, and chased the traders. He was also famously angry, wasn't he, with the with the religious leaders of the day about the observance of the Sabbath. With the um, which meant, you know, they criticized him healing, healing a, a, a man on the Sabbath day. He was angry with the way things were when he saw people like shepherd with that without a uh well, sorry with like a sheep without a shepherd and so on so you might call god's anger a, a righteous anger mind you a kind of anger we might feel at uh, some of the injustices in the world uh, famines oppression persecution uh, refugees and so on when, when things aren't as they could be or should be and innocent people suffer. Aristotle had a good, a good handle on this. He said this, oh, some, some, Ian's pulled out some really ancient people here. Yeah, these, these are good. This is Aristotle. Anyone can be angry, that is easy. But to be angry with the right person in the right way at the right time and to the right degree, that's not easy. So, Two points. So anger can be dangerous, but it can be a good thing. So the third point, how can we discern the difference? We've spoken about God's anger and about righteous anger, haven't we? The focus of this good sort of anger is love for someone doing wrong so that we can bring, uh, bring them back, or, or someone being wronged, or injustice towards the innocent, and so on. Slow and controlled anger here may be the spark to put things right, and, and that's what we would, we would hope. It would work towards bringing justice into, into these situations. However, anger easily gets distorted, and often it gets distorted when 
we believe the person being um, wronged is is us um, and and when the subject of our love is not god or others but ourselves and there's a great example of this in the scripture rather i suppose a, a depressing example that it's found in genesis chapter 4 the story of, of cain and abel so i'm going to read that to you now um adam <clears throat> made love to his wife eve and she became pregnant and gave birth to cain and she said with the help of the lord i have brought forth a man and later she gave birth to his brother abel now abel kept flocks and cain worked the soil and in the course of time, Cain brought some fruits of the soil as an offering to the Lord. But Abel also brought an offering, fat portions from some of the firstborn of his flock. And the Lord looked with favor on Abel and his offering, but on Cain and his offering, he did not look with favor. So Cain was very angry and his face was downcast. And then the Lord said to Cain, why are you angry why is your face downcast if you do what is right will you not be accepted but if you do not do what is right sin is crouching at your door it desires to have you but you must rule over it now cain said to his brother abel let's go out to the field and while they were in the field, Cain attacked his brother Abel and killed him. Then the Lord said to Cain, where is your brother Abel? I don't know, he replied. Am I bro my brother's keeper? And the Lord said, what have you done? Listen, your brother's blood cries out to me from the ground. Now you are under a curse and driven from the ground which opened its mouth to receive your brother's blood from your hand when you work the ground it will no longer yield its crops for you you will be a restless wanderer on the earth quite a story eh? and it's hard to see at first glance i suppose why god accepted abel's offering and not cain's Hebrews 11 verse 4 has a comment that, that maybe is helpful here where it says by faith Abel offered a better sacrifice than Cain did by faith he was commended as a righteous man when God spoke well of his offerings you see God knows the heart and we read that Abel had faith and we read that Cain didn't do what is right and that evil was crouching at his door something he must master I guess we don't really know what made the difference between the brothers. Perhaps Cain found the pressure of being the firstborn too much to handle. Who knows? Perhaps having his face pushed out when his brother came along and had something had something to do with it. I don't know. But something within him resented his brother. Um, and, and, and it came to a head. Anger burned. He didn't master it and subsequently planned and carried out the killing of his brother. Somewhere Cain's love for himself became stronger than his love for his brother. I think that's the point, or indeed his love for God. His anger was aroused and it became distorted and dangerous, resulting in the folly of murder. Now, there's another example, maybe more relevant, in, in the book um, which, which um, Ian referred to and I, Jan, kindly sent a couple of photographs of the book that Ian was going to read. Um, so here we go. Imagine this scenario. Our boss frustrates us during a working day, so we drive home in rush hour traffic, angry with just about everyone on the road. We yell at the teenage daughter whose bag we trip over in the hallway and groan at the pile of breakfast dishes still in the sink. Whose job was it to wash those, we wonder. Suddenly the whole family are on the receiving end of our quietly fuming anger as we attempt to control ourselves. We open the post only to exclaim at the telephone bill and vow to unplug it permanently. There is no cheese to make the supper with, and even the fridge door gets an angry slam in protest. Then our husband walks through the door with a cheery smile, and we are angry simply because he isn't. How dare you be so cheerful, we snap. So in our anger, so our anger angers him. And as he leaves the kitchen after our frustrated outburst, 
and woe is me overture. It is the dog who gets the sharp end of our tongue as we shout at him too, leaving him carrying in his basket. Okay, you see how easy it is. Hold on, let me just get rid of that. Um, yeah, as you can see how easy it is, we're hurt. And, and it's the ones that we love who get hurt and everybody gets it. So that's the third point. And the fourth is what can we do to make sure our anger is slow and good? So there are many suggestions actually in counseling and, and, and psychotherapy and anger management courses. And one model is the A4 model, basically four A's, right? The, the first is A for arousal, but something that triggers your anger second a appraisal ask yourself why you are angry why am i angry third a approval what action should be taken if any and the fourth one the action itself do the right thing four a's arousal appraisal approval action and the bible actually isn't short of advice two and writing to the ephesians paul says this um ephesians chapter 4 26 27 in your anger do not sin do not let the sun go down while you're still angry do not give the devil a foothold in your anger do not sin the original language here is is imperative get angry do not sin it's telling us that anger is okay as we've seen even good but whatever the cause don't sin don't let your anger get the better of you don't let it get out of control because it can damage both yourself and others the, the, the verse suggests we can control it and we know that's true don't we seriously um you recall the times when you were a friend a partner colleagues having a bit of a tiff phone rings hello mike here you know sweetest telephone voice the anger is dropped it is controlled so then in an earlier letter uh, paul writes to the galatians and in a passage encouraging the galatians to live by the spirit rather than by their own flesh paul you remember this fruit of the spirit paul says the character of jesus implanted in us is love joy I'm, I'm reading this i don't know these off by heart i never did was any good at learning love joy peace forbearance kindness goodness faithfulness gentleness and self-control it is possible isn't it with god's help to handle our anger co correctly so back to ephesians paul gives us one of the best pieces of advice ever don't let the sun go down on your anger deal with it if it is if it's not possible to do it in person take a few breaths let it go offer it to god ask for his peace if the person you're angry with shares the same house as you then um talk to them you you you, you really must tell them why you're angry but in language that doesn't accuse apologize kiss and make up because if you don't says paul the devil will get a foothold and the weeds of of your anger will grow and take root and become difficult to shift the cancer of your anger will spread and cause more damage so there you go um ian says not my usual type of sermon but helpful i hope in the end it's about living our lives for christ and being a good witness for him amen whether in righteous anger at injustices or in christ-like behavior when our anger is unhelpful not i but christ in me